thank you for your blood. Lord, we thank you for your blood. Thank you for covering our families, God. Thank you for covering the people around us because we are there and you are covering us, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Put your hands together and say we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. Come on and lift your voice and say we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. All of God's house say we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you.
Come on, every stand, everyone stand. How great is your love. Come on, all standing all over the building. Come on, keep singing that song. How great. How great is your love. That you have poured. Come on. How great. Come on. So great. Come on, say nothing or no one. Nothing or no one can Come on. separate me from your love. You made, you made a way. Come on, say nothing or no one. Nothing or no Hallelujah, one Jesus. can separate on, me from Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning to seek after your spirit, your heart, and your wisdom. For, Lord, your word teaches, Lord, that it's not by our own might nor by our own power, but by your Holy Spirit. So we welcome you in this, in this place, God, into this atmosphere, Holy Spirit. And we're asking that you would have your way, Father God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this heart. Have your way in this mind. Have your way in the life of my brother and my sister, the hand that I'm holding right now. Lord, I pray that you would release power into my brother. Release glory into my sister. Release strength into them, God. In the name of Jesus, God. And everything that is not like you, oh God, we release book in the name of Jesus God we bind in the name of Jesus God we cancel out every assignment and we command every evil spirit to loose my brother now to loose my sister now to loose what belongs to them now to get thee behind the Satan in the name of Jesus Christ I declare healing in her I declare victory in him I declare breakthrough in their house I declare provisions for their family I declare God in the name of Jesus that by your spirit 
destroyed, oh God. Because of the anointing, oh God. Every yoke is destroyed, God. Every burden be lifted, God. Every heaviness be removed, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak power. I speak love. I speak a sound mind. In the name of the Messiah, Jesus. I speak healing, God. I speak restoration, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, send your word. Send a revelatory word. A message from on high. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see your glory and experience your power and experience your anointing. We give you all praise and honor in this place right now. Set the atmosphere. Come into the room, Lord. Set the atmosphere. Show up in the house, God. Show out in the place, God. Move like you want to do it. Show up, God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all praise. We give you all honor. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bind the spirit of hindrance. We bind the spirit of distraction. We bind the spirit of unclean thoughts of evil imaginations in the name of the Messiah. And I thank you for the victory for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Give him some worship. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 53, verse number 5, it says that our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And I declare the healing power and the healing virtue of God to be released in this atmosphere right now. Lord, you said as often as we come together, we are to do this in remembrance of you. So, Lord, today we choose to remember and reflect on your goodness, how you died on the cross, Lord, how you rose again on the third day, Lord, and how you reign forevermore, God. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the honor in the name of Jesus. As we partake as one today, forgive our sins, heal our lands, and bring restoration. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. The deacons are going to come and we're going to go right in.
Hallelujah. As you're feeling it. transitioning so that we'll partake of the offering today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, for me. Say, I know it was the blood. I know, I know it was the blood. I know. I know it was the blood. Let me say, I know it was, it was the blood, blood for me. For me. Oh, one day He died upon the cross. Say, I know. I know it was the blood for me. One more time, I know it was the blood. Say, I know it was the blood. Come on. I know it was the blood. I know. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I, when I was on. Come on and pray. He died upon the cross. I know it was. I know it Was it? it was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. Oh. It was my Savior's blood. Oh, yeah. It was my Savior's blood. Oh.
amen. Get involved. You know, God wants you to reach people. Somebody say, God wants me to reach people. Not just come to church, but amen, we got to take the church outside, amen. And what we do here at Spearfield is every fourth, the second and fourth Saturday, we have outreach. So you can come and outreach, amen. And speaking of outreaches, amen, we're actually giving away some school supplies to our kids. So August 9th, we're going to be doing that. August 9th, we're giving school supplies at 10 a.m. So we want you to get involved, and you can get involved by supporting that vision, bringing some backpacks full of supplies so that we can give. Is that all right? So amen. God wants us to give and be faithful. Amen. That's our service unto the Lord. So now at this time, while you are standing out of reverence to the word of the Lord, we're getting ready for the word of God on this lovely, wonderful, wonderful morning. As you turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1 through 7. And while you're turning there, I'm telling you, God has been good. More than good, amen? But because he's good, that's not why I worship him. I don't worship him just because he's done good stuff for me. I don't worship him because he gave me a place to live or something to eat on the table. Or No, no, I worship him because he is God. He is God. He is God. Somebody say, he is God. Hallelujah, he is God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Once again, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. When you have it, say, I have it. If you don't have Bibles, we have it on the screen to read along as follow. It says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take away my two sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty them, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all the vessels, and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass... When the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons live on the rest. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for your living word. Sharper than any double-edged sword, so I pray, speak to me, through me, and for me, guide my tongue. To only declare the oracles of God this morning, have your way as I decrease, you increase. Move like a mighty rushing wind, let every ear have an ear and every heart be open to receiving and hearing what your spirit is saying to the church. We bind every evil spirit, every distracting spirit, every hindering spirit, and every unclean spirit that is trying to steal this message. Satan, get out, the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that this word is going to prosper in every life that believe it in Jesus name amen and amen before you sit down tell somebody say the miracle is in your house turn to somebody else on the other side and say the miracle is in your house now give God a big praise if you believe it as you have your seats in the presence of the Lord somebody say it again the miracle is in your house Hallelujah. As you know, we have started a series, amen, and the series that we are on, it is entitled The Big Comeback. The Big Comeback, amen. And one of the things I come to realize is as we are on our way back, when you study about coming back, that means that you ended up somewhere else. That means that you went through uh, some circumstances that detoured you and that moved you from the place that you were once in and caused you to end up in a different place, amen. But to be the one that is on your way back or to be the one to experience a big comeback is to mean that you are in the process of being restored. See, my Bible says that our Lord will restore unto you the years that the enemy have stolen from you. And I'm here to let you know that there's some stuff that's been stolen that God is going to cause your enemies to give back to you. You don't hear me. Somebody say, I see restoration in my view. 
The Bible tells us that Elijah, the purpose of Elisha, the prophet, amen, Elisha was being used by God to help Israel come back to who they were to help Israel come back. Why? Because they got knocked off course. They got knocked out of the place that they were once in, and God was using the prophet to bring Israel back into the place of restoration and recovery. First step of restoration is to restore them back into their union with their God. Once you get connected to God like you're supposed to be, then everything else is added. For the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things. What things? Whatever the thing is you need shall be added unto you. A lot of times we seek the things instead of seeking the God who made the things. And if you can get God in your view, God in your picture, God in your house, God in your spirit, then everything else you need will begin to come back to you. Shout, this is my comeback. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible teaches that as Elisha the prophet was on, in, on his journey in the process of restoring Israel back to God, the Bible says he came across a woman. Let me talk to you a little bit about a woman. In the Bible, you will find that a woman is man's companion, created by God. A woman is a person in every respect, just like a man. Somebody say hallelujah. She shares in the image of God. I'm going to say that again. She shares in the image of God. So men, don't walk around thinking that you're the only image. Do I got a witness in the house? We are the image of God, but our wives, our, our women, our sisters, our family, mothers, they share in the image of God. And if they share in the image of God, they also share in the blessings and the favor of God. Do I got a witness in this house? Somebody shout, I'm getting my share. Uh -huh. They share in the image of God. Amen. The Bible teaches that women, according to Scripture, were found, amen, they, they found their sense of worth in childbearing, basically meaning this. In the Bible days, if a woman could not have child, she felt like she was useless. So it is in a woman's nature to desire to be productive. Uh -huh. It is in a woman, in the natural, a woman's nature to desire to help somebody. For God created the woman to be a help meet, to created the woman to be a help mate, to created the woman to help produce. And women who feel like I can't produce feel like I'm not doing anything. And that's why you got a lot of angry women because they don't feel like they're getting the best end of the stick around. Let me slow down because I'm going to teach this thing softly in here. Somebody going to say hallelujah. But I'm going to take you now from seeing it as a woman's perspective and take you now to the symbolism for the Bible teaches that the church is symbolic to a woman. So when you study the scripture, the Bible teaches that the church is the bride of Christ. And this church, the bride of Christ, is dealing with some unproductiveness. This church, the body of Christ, is going through a season where we feel like we're working hard, but we're not seeing any productivity just yet. Somebody say hallelujah. Therefore, you will find that this woman, the church, I'm going to use her to call it a church, spirit filled, went to the prophet Elijah and said, I got some stuff going on and I need help. I got some things that I'm dealing with and I need help. Now let me talk to you about Elijah. As I told you before, his name means God is my salvation, which is the same name that Jesus has. Jesus' name in Greek means God is my salvation. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2, it tells us that God did all of his miraculous works through the prophets of old, but in this day and age, he's doing it through his only begotten son. So I'm going to liken Elijah as Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, church, if you would go to Jesus. Yeah, help me, Holy Ghost. If you would go to the prophet of all prophets, the priest of all priests, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the God of all so-called gods, the creator of all creation. If you would look unto Jesus today. You will see things manifest in your life and things that you need will begin to come up in your life. Amen. This woman had a problem. The Bible says she went unto the prophet. She went unto the messenger of God. She went to the representative of God and she talked to him. And the Bible said she said or cried out to Elisha. Key word, cry out. If you need a miracle from God, you got to learn to cry out. 
There's two different types of cries that comes out of the mouth of an individual that's going through a storm in your life. You're going to either cry in distress or cry in victory. Do I have a witness in this church this morning? You're going to either cry out and yell at somebody or you're going to shout aloud like you never shouted before and let a praise out of you. This woman cried out before Elisha, the representative of the Lord, the one that God called to release a powerful anointing in the lives of the individual. She cried out to the man of God. I love it because she didn't cry out with a complaint. She didn't cry out on saying how much she hate everybody. Do I have a witness here? Tell somebody, say, stop crying about it and start being about it. We weeping about everything. Lord, this is my fault. I'm tired. Nobody want to talk to me. Nobody. Tell somebody, say, if you're going to cry, cry out a praise out of your spirit. If you're going to cry, shout for joy. If you're going to cry out, cry out because you're expecting and not because you don't believe that it's going to happen. If you're going to cry, you're going to cry out with confidence knowing that you got victory. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says she went to Elijah, cried out to him saying, and she said to him, she says, your servant, and the word servant means the worker, the one who produces. She said, your servant, then she said, my husband. When you study a husband, a husband's responsibility is to protect and provide. She said, my husband is dead, which means he has no more life. He is not producing anymore. She cried out to the man of God and says, my resources are dead. My house has just been taken from me. I'm using your term today because the husband provides and, and there's some things that you have that has been providing for you and God has been using to bless you for a season but you've been going through a season now where those very things that you once had called a blessing are now starting to dry up what do you do when you have things that you depended on when you have things that you relied on and then it stops what do you do when the doors get shut on you? <laughs> okay, let me really talk to you right now. What do you do after you worked all these years at this blessing God gave you and then they lay you off? What do you do when you have served and you have worked all hard and diligent and put in every ounce of energy that you got into something, building something, and the good thing about it, look, I want you to catch this. The Bible says that she said to the prophet that you know he feared God. So it's not like he was a bad person. It's not like, I'm going to say it like this, it's not like you didn't pay your bills on time. It's not like you were not faithful at the place that was providing for you. It's not like you didn't show up to work on time. It's not like you didn't do your part. She said he was faithful. He feared the Lord. These things in your life, how, what do you do when God gives you something and then he just takes it? Let me take this off because y'all deep in here. What do you do when you have it and then God looks at it and says, I'm not going to let it be usable anymore for you. You depended on it for a long time, and I let it become your security blanket. You depended on them for a long time, and I allowed them to hold you for that season. You depended on these things for a while, and they kept you for a while, but now that the thing that you depended on that was given to you from God died, what do you do? Now let's talk about death because it's not easy to deal with. In this human flesh, we go through when we lose somebody or something that is close to us. We go through emotions. 
We cry, we get depressed, we become worried, we become stressed, we become angered, we become vexed. We go through the emotional roller coaster when we're dealing with these matters in our lives. But one thing you and I need to learn to do that when something dies, it is time for something else to live. Because the purpose of a death is to bring forth something that has life. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. And a lot of times we don't get to the life because we allow what died to keep us bound. This woman could have got so mad like some of us do in this quiet church today. She could have got mad at God. Oh, I ain't never going to church. I'm tired. I'm tired of losing stuff. I'm tired of every time I invest in a friend, they backstab me. Oh, I'm tired. And, and some people didn't backstab you. They just had to move on and go to another place. And you, oh, I'm mad. Everything that I have and everybody that I seem to let in my little circle, they get out of my circle so quick. I'm not letting nobody in. She could have threw a serious attitude with God, with the prophet, she could have took it out on her children. She could have took it out on the people around her. She could have went off on the creditors. She could have got on the phone like some of us do and start cussing. She could have ran the alcohol, ran back to the bar, found her sugar daddy, and start doing what she do. She could have ran out and did anything, but instead of doing that, she knew who to go to to get what she needed. Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor, while you are going through, don't you run to no mess. Don't you run to no clubs. Don't you run to no bars. Don't you run to the sin. Don't you run to the habits. You better get in and run to the presence of God and let the spirit of God do what it needs to do in you. I know you going through it. But it's not in vain. She didn't run away. She ran too. She didn't run and go church hopping. She ran too. Slap somebody high five and say, David, run after the giants. She ran to the source. And the Bible says she cried out to the prophet Elijah and said, my husband, the one who provided, the one who worked, the one that was working for me. It's interesting. I was talking to somebody before and I was telling them, I said, you know, whenever you go through a pruning, Whenever there is a pruning in the natural, when the farmer and everybody, when they start doing the pruning and, 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 and when the gardener, rather, when the gardener do the pruning stay, he don't just cut away the bad. When there's a pruning, he cut good stuff too. I never forget when my wife and I was living in Rialto and, and, and she said, go ahead and hire us. Go ahead and hire us some gardeners. I said, okay. I hired the gardeners and, 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 and out of nowhere, my wife came out of the house and all the rose bushes were cut down. She threw a fit. Why you hire these folks? These people don't know what they're doing. They didn't cut up my good stuff. They didn't cut away my roses. Oh, they, it's, it's ugly. It looks bare. And I went to the garden and I said, and I would look, with the mindset of firing them, touch somebody and say, don't you fire them too quickly. So we too quick to want to just fire folks. I will dismiss you out of my life so quickly. Yes, I will. I can go, see you later. I can move on and get what I need to do. I, I don't need you. We so quick to fire folks. And, and so I ran to them. I said, look, first of all, you guys cut all my stuff down. All I want you to do is trim stuff and make it look nice. You cut it down. And then, and then I said, and then you got my wife in here mad at me. Look, I'm not paying y'all for this. And then he said to me, he says, one of the things you don't know, I'm talking to you, he says, what you don't know is if you don't cut it down in this season, it's not going to grow back better. I was like, ooh. Talk to somebody who just don't know how to do this stuff, you know. And that's the problem is there's things that we have cut off of our own lives. There's things that God had to cut away. And instead of us getting angry, we need to learn to just go through the season until it all comes back to you. Until God revives it and restores it. Don't quit before you get your breakthrough. Do I got a praiser in this church? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Many of you have been going through some pruning in your life. God took some stuff away that was negative, but there was some positive that you was holding on to that he had to remove from you, and it's the security you had, but he didn't remove it to cause you to run. He removed it to excel and cause you to prevail in your life. And if you want to walk into the newness of life, you better learn to praise him while you going through this season. So, the Bible says she ran to the prophet and said, the creditors are coming. <laughs> it's amazing on how when you, when you lose some things and then the enemy come in and try to take everything. Have you ever felt, have you ever felt like everything went crazy at the same time? <sighs> Maybe it's just me in this season. Can we talk? Spirit feel one on one. Let's have a sit down. For real. Maybe it's just me. Like, like it seemed like, okay, it's like, it's crazy. It's like you didn't already took my spouse. Now the credit is coming to take the kids too. That's like saying you took the house and now you want the car too. Do you hear what I'm saying? You, you, you already took the things that I have. You took the job. You took this. And now you're taking something now. Trying to strip her bare. But she sought after the presence of God by going to the man of God. And the man of God asked her a question. First question he said is, what do you want? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, say, do you know what you want? You got some folks in church who just pray in circles. Come on, let's talk about this thing up in here. I mean, people don't have no direction. What do you want God to do? Well, uh, I don't uh, well, just pray for everything. Okay, well, okay, but you got to give me something to pray about. Uh -huh. You got to know what you want. A reason why, reason why us as a people do not experience the miracles like we should is because we don't even know if we want a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Like, I never forget the sermon I preach. Do you want to be made whole? Because sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we're in some stuff, but we really don't want to be free from it. We want the benefits of the freedom. But we don't want the freedom. You don't hear what I'm saying. I, 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 want, I want to be liberated from some things, but I don't want to be liberated from all these things. i never forget, I told somebody one day, I prophesied over somebody. And I said, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that you're coming off of Social Security. And God is getting ready to bless you with your own business. And it's going to take off and it's going to come in like a flood. And miracles going, God's going to bless you. I, I spoke that with every ounce of life I had. And that person said, don't touch me. Walked away with an attitude. The Lord ain't taking my money from me. No, he ain't. Missed the fact that God is trying to quadruple your stuff. But we so connected to the things and we can't see the new thing he's trying to do. So the prophet says, so what do you want? And, and that's what God is asking you today. I'm going to say, I'm going to take it to your house. What do you want him to do at home? Uh-huh. Oh, well, well, I want him, I want God <laughs> to turn my wife into a woman of God. <laughs> or I'm going to take it to I want God to turn my husband into a man of God. I want him to, uh, I mean, I mean, Pastor, you're a great example of a man of God. You have no clue what people got to deal with with a man of God. Stop playing in here. And again, we want the benefits of it. Benefits of it is when you think of a woman of God, you think, oh, she's so submissive. Oh, she's so loving. She cooks when I wanted to cook. She lays hands on me when I need prayer. She says she loves me every night. She makes sure everything is fine with the kids. She's a woman of God. Yes, she is. Oh, we say a man of God. You say, oh, he's an awesome man. He loves me so much. He brings me flowers. He gives me the rose bush. He brings me chocolatey chocolates. He does these great things. That's the definition of a man and woman of God to people. She say nice things to me. He says wonderful things to me. But you fail to realize there's another side to the man and a woman of God. 
You love them when they bring in home the chocolates. You love them when they tell you sweet something. But oh, let them rebuke you. Let your husband, man of God, or your wifey, man, of, woman of God, come to you and say, look, brother, you need to stop that. That ain't of God. The Lord rebuked that. Oh, now you want a divorce, huh? Oh, let her tell you something about yourself. And then you looking around talking about, I'm going to find me another fish in the sea because she rebellious. Oh, now she rebellious now. Somebody say hallelujah. You need to know what you want. You want something. You need to say, you need to detail what you want God to do for you. And, and here it is. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. And take all of it, which means, because when he bless you, he bless you. Hear this. This is how God bless you. Now, the Bible says the Lord blessing make it rich and added no sorrow. But I'm going to tell you right now, even though the blessing added no sorrow, the blessing does come with a fight. Blessings come with fights. Blessing comes through fights. Blessings are kept because of a fight. Do you hear what I'm saying? Thorns. And, 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 and our wheat and tear, they grow together. Do you hear me? They grow together. So you got to take the good and the bad. And God is, yes, he's going to bless it. But you got to take what comes with the package deal and learn how to endure until you get to the harvest season where he separates wheat from the tear. You got to be able to endure. You got to know what you want. Stick to it until you see what you want to see and get what God has for you. He said, what do you want? Second question he asked her. What is in your house? First of all, we don't get miracles because we don't know what we want. Second reason why we don't get miracles because we don't recognize what we already got. We get mad over what we don't have. Over who we don't have. Come on. We get jealous and envious because we see things that we don't have but it seems like everybody else have it and we see those things and we get mad at everybody and we're missing we fell in the sea the fact that God has already given you something in your house to use you might not have what I got, but you got something that I don't got and if you would learn to get what God has in your house Well, my family's not like theirs, but your family have a unique anointing upon that house if you would discover the anointing. Touch somebody say, dig, dig, dig. You got to learn to dig and search and find what is in your house. There is precious jewels in your home, precious jewels inside of you. A precious anointing dwells in you. And in order for you to get it out, you got to stop pouting about what you don't got and praise God for what you do got and rejoice in how you got it and thank God for what he's doing with it do I got anybody in this quiet church she said I so what do you got in your house I well I don't have nothing in my house but I do got this jar of oil <laughs> that's been sitting in the house touch somebody and say neighbor how long you let it sit you know God wow thank you Jesus that's a revelation you want to know why we're in some of the ruts we're in it's because we got stuff in the house sitting and God wants it used. Uh-huh, yeah, Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's gifts in you that God want to come out of you and you'll never use, <laughs> you'll never use what you got until you have to. Uh -huh. There is stuff that's on the inside of your life that you will never even tap into until you are faced with a situation that makes it come out of your life. Do I have a witness in this house? Uh -huh. As I told the earlier servant, I told the earlier servant, I said, you know, there was one day my wife and I, we were sitting and, and we were at home and we were packing and cleaning and, and we, were, we were painting and doing all kind of stuff and preparing. And, and one of the sisters of the church came to the house to help. And when she got there to help, the, you know, we were sitting there and I said to myself and I said, open, I said, I'm hungry. And she said, well, what do you got here? I said, we don't got nothing because we didn't go shopping. And that's the problem is 
We got so much stuff, but because we don't have what we want, our mindset is I have nothing. That's how we think. Like for instance, for instance, you have cream of wheat, but because you don't got Cheerios, the mentality of the mind is I ain't got nothing. Come on, look, I grew up in LA during some hard times. We used to make stuff happen. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about when you hungry? Syrup toast? <laughs> uh, uh, ketchup? Bread? <laughs> y'all better stop playing with me. Look, I got something that probably none of y'all know about. Milk toast. <laughs> you don't hear me. I made cereal. I put some toast in the toaster and I put, look, broke it up. You talking about frosted mini wheats. I made the frosted mini wheat. Took me some wheat bread, cut it up, and put it in the bowl. Threw a little milk on it. Threw some cinnamon and sugar. You got to eat it fast before it gets soggy. But I ate it. <laughs> Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor, there's some things you got to do quickly before it ruins. There's some things you got to move in fast before it breaks. There's some miracles that God is trying to do. You got to work it now before it's too late. <laughs> this woman, the guy, she said to us, she said, what do y'all have in your house? I said, we got nothing. She said, hold on, baby, let me see. She was, she was an older, older sister, so she called us her, her son and daughter, and she said, well, look, go ahead, son, go sit down, go sit down, son, and let me take care of this. Let mama show you what I can do. I said, well, go on ahead. So she go in the cabinets, and she go in the cupboards, and she said, you got plenty of stuff in here, watch this. So she go in the cupboards and the cabinets, she pull out a box of Jiffy. Oh, help me, honey God. Then she went into, then she went in, in, into the refrigerator, and then she found what we would call some cabbage sitting in there. Pulled that out. Then she went up to the top of the cabinet and found some seasoning. Then she went into my freezer, found a bag of stuff I ain't never seen before. I'm just keeping it real. Went right into the freezer and walked in and came out with a bag. I said, what is that? And basically, we had a food ministry down the hill. So with the food ministry, what happened is when we had overload, they say, Pastor, here, take this home, keep this in your freezer. So I had some bags of stuff in my freezer that I had no clue what it was. It was some kind of patty. And she went in there, took all of that stuff, and said, give me just a little moment. What in? Can we? Look, it starts smelling good. And then she gave us a plate, went in, and I ate that plate. And after I said, what is this? It was the best, other than my wife, I had to give her the props. It was the best cabbage I ever ate. I said, what is this? And I asked everybody, did everybody get your plate? I went in for thirds. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, you got some stuff all in your cupboard. <laughs> that if you would just pull it out of you and start whipping it together and start hooking. See, this is our problem. This is our problem. The problem with us is in our mind, I don't have nothing if it makes me work. If I got to drive, if I can't drive through to get it, I ain't got nothing. But if I got to pull a pot out, find me some grease, get me some frozen chicken and defrost, if you telling me I got to cook, I'm a starve. Let's talk. You got folks who have a mindset that they will starve first before they go in their cabinet and get some of them canned goods and eat. You got folks going on three-day fast for no reason. And God ain't even telling you to do it. You got plenty to make some work. And I'm not just talking about the natural stuff. I'm talking about we got some stuff that God has invested in us, but... But people don't want to do anything because it takes work. It takes commitment. Oh, I don't want to have to commit to We want everything to just be given to us easy. Stop so somebody high five and say, neighbor, you don't want no drive-through miracle. 
I see this in the spirit right now. I, I'm telling you, you don't want, you want a miracle from God that, look, hands got put into this thing. I, I'm talking about some work been put into it. You don't want no drive through miracle because a drive through miracle means it's a process miracle that can actually turn out to be messy in your life later instead of blessing in your life now. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, you better learn to put your hands to the plow and learn to get out there and work that work and let God show you what he can do. I dare you to get up out of that seat and give God a praise and shout, neighbor, there is work to be done. He said, what do you got in your house? She said, I all I got is some oil. He said, well, then go put in some work. Get out there and start getting some vessels. Get out there and start talking to neighbors. Watch this. People, people don't want to network with nobody. Uh -huh. See, some miracles we are not experiencing because we don't want to deal with people. <laughs> there is only certain dimensions of blessing and breakthrough you're going to get by yourself. There is some levels and dimensions of blessing, favor, and breakthrough that's coming your way that has to come through networking. That's why I'm going to say this to you too. You better be careful how you treat folks. You better stop rolling your eyes at everybody. You better stop looking at folks funny. You, better, you don't hear what I'm saying because you never know. You just might be treating folks like they are nobody because you got a little something on you. And then when you need help, then you're going to be looking at them. You better learn how to respect your neighbor because you might need some syrup later or some sugar later or a couple of eggs tomorrow. Yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor, you got to watch how you treat me. I got to watch how I treat you. We got to watch how we talk about each other. Don't treat each other bad while the hard times are here. Because when the tables turn, you're going to need each other. When you're going through, the one that you push away, you're going to need to come and pray. You better learn. Somebody say hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. For this woman to go and borrow vessels, borrow, keyword borrow, that means she had to humble herself. To, for me to go to you and say, I need help, that takes humility. And you got some people who will be so arrogant and prideful, who will not even go to somebody because they feel like they got it. And then you find yourself under the rock, can't make it out. If you would have said something, you could have got something. And the reason why some of us don't ask for nothing is because we know how we treated certain people. They ain't going to help me. Ooh, I know what I said about her. Oh, I know how I treated him. Oh, I might as well just go on and trust in the Lord. And watch, I'm going to tell you how God works. The miracle's not going to happen until you go to that one. There is some people that you can't help but to face. There is some folks that God is going to make you face them in order to release your blessing. Job, when he was going through, he couldn't get his breakthrough until he prayed for his old friends. I'm Somebody say hallelujah. Shake your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, use what you got. You got a miracle in your house. You got a blessing in your house. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, I'm not broke. I'm not defeated. I'm in between miracles. I've been through it, but I'm on my way to the next level, to my next purpose, to my next dimension. Give God a praise in here like you're ready for a real breakthrough right now. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I love this part. Watch this. In the process, he said, borrow vessels. But then he said, get your sons, go in, shut the door. <laughs> Humble yourself in network, then shut the door. Touch my say, shut the door. Ooh, I'm not talking about your natural door. Let's talk deeper. Shut the door of your ear gates and your eye gates. 
You say, Pastor, what you mean? Shut the door of my eye gates and my ear gates. Hear this. The eyes and the ears are the gateways to your soul. And whatever you allow to get in your eyes and ears, it affects or it perfects your soul. So you have to learn to shut off any thought that's trying to hinder you from getting this blessing. You are at a point of a real miracle. You need to stop allowing negative thoughts to get to your mind and you need to stop allowing yourself to see things in the flesh. Shut your eyes from the flesh. Open your eyes in the spirit. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith and start using what you got. Shut the door. Get your miracle. Get your breakthrough. Get your revival. Get in where you fit in. Somebody say hallelujah. I got to shut the door because sometimes my head spins. I got to shut the door because sometimes I only see defeat. So I got to shut the door because sometimes my mind is crazy. But if I can shut the door, if I can get in my house and we can shut the door, cast down every thought and every negative spirit and get a miracle, something will happen. Shut the door. She shut the door. She didn't do it alone. So this, here this, here this. This is prophecy for you. This is prophecy. Don't miss this. She shut the door, but she didn't do it alone. She took her kids with her. Which means your miracle is not only for you. It's for you and your household. It ain't just your blessing. It ain't just your destiny. It's your family's destiny. It is your family's legacy. If he blessed you, he blessed the house. If he blessed the house, he's blessing you. So stop fighting from... You got people at home fighting each other instead of recognizing that you are partners to the inheritance of the law. Took her kids, shut the door. In closing, after that, she feel, they feel, they work together in their family. Woo! Work together. Work together. Work together. Stop being Superman. Stop being Superwoman. Stop being Wonder Woman. Don't be Batgirl. Start working with your team. Hook up with your family. Pray together. Say, we're going to get this thing together. We're going to press together. We're going to dance together. We're going to shout together. We go to church together. We going home together. And I don't care what we go through. We'll go through the storm together. And we'll get out of it together. Together. Do I got anybody that want a miracle? Took her kids and shut the door. After shutting the door, filled the vessels. After the vessels were filled, she said, give me one more. He said, I have no more. She said, okay. Key word for you right now. The next thing she did was she didn't walk in assumption. She didn't take the vessels that were filled with oil and just start doing her own thing. You cannot, after you get one revelation from God and says, go, get vessels, connect here, put oil in it, do this, that, and the other, you can't hear that word and stand on that by itself. You need more direction. After you get that word, stand on it, and then wait for the next one. Hear me. The Bible says she took what she had, and instead of her running out into the streets doing her, she took what she had and went back to Elisha and said, I've done what you said. Now what? You need to have a now what in your spirit. Father, I did everything I, you told me to do at home. Now what? I've been the best husband I know how to be. Now what? I made sure that my kids were fed, but now what? I did what you told me to do in the ministry, but now what? What's the next level here? What is the next step? What is the next move? She went to the man of God and said to him, I've done what you said, presented what she had, and he gave her a second word. And this is what he said. Now take what you got. Get out there and sell it. Take and pay off your debts and take the leftovers for your house. When God bless you, he don't just bless you with enough. He gives you more than enough so that he'll sustain you 
even through your famine times. I need somebody that believes God is giving more than enough to give him a more than enough type of worship. Somebody give him some praise in the building. Somebody give him some worship. And you say, Pastor, in closing, while we're standing, we're going to close. You say, how does this apply to me? Plain and simple. You have to ask God to reveal to you what's in you. Hear me. Lord, what, what's, what's in this house? Because there's a lot in you. There's so much in you that, hear this, the visions in this life can't contain what's in you. <laughs> hear me again. What's in you because doesn't the Bible say it like this? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So the world and the devil and nobody else, nothing can contain what's in me. Because it's big. It's huge in you. And, and you have to say, what is in me? There's gifts in you. There's talents in you. The Holy Spirit is in you if you're saved. You got so much down on the inside of your life that you're not tapping into because you're looking at life in the eyes of the flesh. You have to see things beyond this natural and get into the spirit. You think all you need is a friend to help you when all you need is Jesus and he'll do the rest for you. Go to the God of all creation and he'll take care of everything else. Stop, ooh, thank you Jesus. Stop starting and then stopping because someone stopped you. That's no excuse. Hear me, I'm going to say that again. Stop starting something in your life and then stopping what you're doing because in my mind, they stopped me. Can't nobody stop you but you. If I'm on my way to a purpose, hear me. Stand here. Stand in the middle, please. Right there. If I'm on my way somewhere, and right there, Elder Harvey is where I'm trying to get to. But Deacon Ray is my hindrance. I'm going to use it like this. He got an attitude problem. He don't want to give me the money that he owed me. He don't want to treat me like I got respect or he got respect. So we use all of these things. This is, he's not like that. Don't get it wrong. But we use all of these excuses on why we can't get to where we're going. Can't no one stop you but you. So while he's sitting in your road, you know what you need to do? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. You need to move around people. I'm going to say it like this. Get over it. Get over people. Get over the hindrance. Get over the humps and get to your purpose. Close your eyes, bow your hands, lift your hands as we dismiss. But before we dismiss, I want somebody to be saved. Because here's the reality. You can never get to where you're going without Jesus. This woman, when she went through the loss of her husband, she didn't allow the loss of her husband to cause her to stop. But if anything, it activated something in her. And what it activated was a desire to seek out God. That's why she went to find the prophet of God so that she can seek for the presence of God. And if somebody in this place would come and seek the Spirit of the Lord, and the way you do that, you got to open your heart and let Jesus come in to be your Savior. You say, Pastor, I'm already saved. Well, some of us in here, just like this woman, are going through something, but we're not responding that way. Some of us are going off on our children. We're going off on the spouses. We're going off on one another. We're, we're hurting one another verbally, fighting each other in physical. There's some things going on that we need a breakthrough with from. And if you need it, don't look at me. Come and meet me right here with a bold spirit saying, God, I need your help. I need a miracle. I need a revival. I need a real breakthrough. Come and meet me right here, right now. Come on down. Line up right here with me. Come on. Smile on. He's been good. To me.
Come to Jesus this morning. God, God smiled on me. He has said, he has said be free. Come on. Step number one, before you receive anything from God, you have to give something to God. In the Bible, it teaches us that before they went and presented anything before a king or got anything or any request from a king, they had to first present something to the king. And when they presented something, a gift to the king, they always came with gifts. And when they gave the gift, the king heard the request and if he wanted to, he granted the request. You're coming before the king of kings. And before you can ask for anything financially, physically healing, anything in this natural realm, before you can ask for, you have to first present a gift. And this is the gift he wants. You. Before he bless you, he wants you. Before he gives you anything in your natural, he wants your life to present yourself as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. That is your reasonable service. So as you're coming to God right now, you're going to present yourself. And the first thing you do when you bring a sacrifice, even before a priest, is you have to lay your hands on it, confess your sins, and then release it. So the first step is confession right now. So close your eyes, lift your hands. Open your hearts. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for resurrecting for me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Renew my mind. Give me a new spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your love. Give me a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Now say, Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for reviving me. Say, Satan, you are defeated. You have no power. You have no authority over my life anymore. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now while your hands lifted, I'm going to decree this. Father, I thank you for each and every soul that came to this altar that was born again, that rededicated, that yielded themselves as a gift to you. Now, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I thank you, Lord, that you're ready to release and grant the request that is being made manifest. I thank you, Lord, that you're hearing the prayers of the righteous, and I thank you, Lord God, that even now as they seek you, God, I pray that you would heal that body. I pray that you would heal that mind. I pray that you would heal that heart. I pray that you would restore their household, their relationships, their friendships, their families, God their finance God Lord this is their season of productivity this is their season of restoration this is their season to see the salvation of the Lord and we give you praise for it I decree in this hour that new things have been revealed and new things are being manifest in Jesus name amen and amen come on give him praise come on give him praise If you need any more additional prayer, you need a minister to seal and to pray even more for you, stay at the altar. If you don't, you may go to your seats. We're going to get ready to dismiss this service so that we can prepare for the next service, the third service. Empowerment service and baptism service is next. If you need prayer and you're in the audience, I want you to come from where you are. Come to the middle aisle on your way out. And our ministers and pastors and pray, uh, uh, helpers will be here to help and pray for you prayer warriors will pray for you so if you need anything we're here for you right now to all of our visitors we want you to know you're not a visitor you are family forever and we welcome you here at spirit field and we thank god for you without further ado we're going to dismiss 
Father, we want to say thank you for your love, grace, mercy, and kindness. Continue to lead us and guide us in all truth. May your Holy Spirit bless and keep us in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Hug your brother and sister on the way out. God bless you all. Remember, the miracle is in your house. Amen.